is the double claw shot. If you're in a hurry or just don't want to wash this, that's cool with me, but there's your answer. If you do want to stick around, pop some popcorn and get ready to enjoy the show. Items are crucial in any video game, and Zelda games probably utilize them the best. You collect so many throughout the game that you have a massive range to choose from. You got your staple items like the bow and arrow, and you got some of the oddball items like the gust bellows, and then you have some actual ball items like the ball and chain. So often you find these items in one of the main dungeons in the game, and it completely helps turn this dungeon inside out and allows you to enjoy it to its maximum potential. But even outside the dungeon, there's items that allow you to explore and enjoy this game beyond what you've been able to before. They are always so well placed in the world that it allows the player to progress at the right times in the games. You have to give your head off to these items. They truly help make Zelda games as great as they are. So allow me to explain to you what the best item is in the Zelda games. And if you have any complaints with my choice, then I would politely ask you to eat some shit. Also, if you paid attention at the beginning of the video, you already know what the answers are. But if you're one of those pot smokers out there and you're more wondering when nacho fries are going to return to Taco Bell, allow me to remind you. The item before you is the double claw shot, and I think most will agree that this is the coolest item in all the Zelda games. This is a mechanically loaded spring device that will shoot a hook and chain wherever you aim it. If it hits a target, it will either drag Link to said target or bring the target to Link. This allows for maximum exploration and looting as Link's range to access anything will greatly increase. The main difference between the claw shot and the double claw shot is there's now two. Yeah, that's all there is to it. Now, there is a lot more to the double claw shot as it allows you can go from one target to another that basically allows you to fly around the worlds they created. Put a bunch of flying targets across the Grand Canyon, Link's going across that thing no problem. And I guess you could nitpick here and you could say I could have picked a stronger item like the Fierce Deity Mask or maybe one of those medallions in Link to the Past. But I'm thinking of the item directly to this series, and I'm not sure if anything's been stronger than the Double Claw Shot. And with that, let's look at the history of this item too. And we're gonna go all the way back to 1991. The Hook Shot was found in the Swamp Palace in The Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. This item was naturally integrated well into the dungeon, which allowed you to latch onto pots and such to cross scaps. The item was also useful in stunning several enemies in the dungeon, and was used to defeat the dungeon boss, which is a giant jellyfish covered up with cotton candy. All you'd have to do is just latch onto said cotton candy, pull it away, and the jellyfish would be exposed for a complete ass kicking by you. Even in the simpler 2D early 90 game, this greatly enhanced the exploration you can do. Already from this moment, we knew this item was going to be something special. The next game the hookshot showed up in was the very next one, Link's Awakening. It was the dungeon item in Catfish Maw, and it was honestly kind of used the same exact way in just another 2D game. One of the big differences was you can grab onto some bridges and pull them towards you, so basically you can expand out a bridge. But that was kind of it, it was basically the same thing. Which I'm not complaining, it was pretty good the first time around. The item really takes a jump forward in Ocarina of Time, the first 3D game in the series. You don't find it in a dungeon though, you find it in Dampy's grave, because now that Link's all grown up, he wants to fulfill his lifelong dream of digging up graves. And in a 3D world, there is so much more targets you can latch onto now. So much more areas to explore starting with just using it to get to the Forest Temple entrance. And this item only gets better as you upgrade it to the long shot in the Water Temple after you get over addiction and defeat yourself. Then feel free to use it against Morpha the dungeon boss. That nucleus doesn't have much of a brain to it and it is easy to drag out of there. There was two more games the hook shocks will show up in that I'll mention. First is Majora's Mask, where you find it in Pirate's Fortress, and for some reason the design has become King Midas's decapitated hand, which I really don't get. The other is in the Wind Waker, where you will find it in one of the final dungeons, the Wind Temple, and it basically does the same thing as in the other games. So at this point, the Hookshot's already been in five games, and it's well established as a staple Zelda item, and probably one of the more popular ones. So let's go to the next 3D Zelda game, where it gets a bit of a changeover, as it's now the Claw Shot. Instead of having like a little arrow at the end of it, it's got a claw to be able to latch onto different items. And of course you know you must treasure it, because this item was sitting inside this beauty for who knows how long. But where this item really takes a turn is when you get to the city in the sky, and the dungeon item happens to be... Uh, the Claw Shot. So then it quickly becomes dubbed the Double Claw Shot. Considering this dungeon is essentially a detached city where you have to zoom from one island to another, it becomes an absolutely perfect place to use the Double Claw Shot and show you just the pure potential of this item. I mean, think of where the room where you have to get this Claw Shot and how you have to get your ass out of there. You really need to use the Double Claw Shot and it feels pretty fun to use. Not only that, but you can use the Double Claw Shot to zoom around a massive dragon you gotta defeat. This motherfucker doesn't stand a chance against you. Because to be honest, he's a bit more of a fucker, he isn't really that tough. But the history of this item does not end there because it also returns in Skyward Sword. You actually don't get it in a dungeon, you get it as the Nehru Gift in the Lerenu Desert. Which I personally found odd, but I didn't really care because it still was just as amazing. You instantly will use these items to get across a gorge to get you further into the desert and find a giant sand sea you didn't even know existed there. 
So while I may not even be anywhere close to being done with this video, I once again will claim that this item remains awesome. So since this idea was brought up back in 1991, it immediately became perfect for this game and has only gotten better. The open world of Zelda games with these very creatively crafted worlds, they have so many hidden places to explore. And whether you're doing a main quest or side quest, you're going to want to explore those places. And the hookshot throughout its history has been the best tool to be able to explore all these hidden locations throughout the world. When you add a second hookshot, or claw shot in this case, onto it, it made your exploration almost limitless. Well, granted, no targets yet limits, but we ignore that fact. I mean, we, don't, we never actually needed a teleportation item in these games because we've had the double claw shots going for us. And as you've probably seen, I have a lot of City in the Sky clips because it just shows how well you can utilize this item. As long as there's targets in the area, you can zoom wherever you want to. There's so many open areas in this dungeon to fly around in, and it feels absolutely terrific. There is one item I do want to at least mention and give a lot of credit to. It is the Sheikah Slate from Breath of the Wild. I don't really know how to grade or even judge the items from Breath of the Wild because you have a bunch of bows and swords and shields and you get a bunch of everything in that game. So I don't really want to include like an item like that, I'd rather just go on to the other core Zelda games. But the Sheikah Slate is super universal with all the runes you get with it, and most of them right at the start of the game. I'll say the Krinos and the camera, they're pretty neat but, you know, not super special. The bombs of course are standard for Zelda and I like how the option. It's the Stasis and the Magnus. Those things can get very creative and very incredible what you can do, and they're absolutely blast to play with. You can stun an enemy, take a boulder, drop it on top of their head with the Magnus, and they'll have no idea what happens when they wake up from their slumber, only to die instantaneously. And then if you spend the money on the DLC and work your way through the missions, you end up getting a freaking motorcycle in Zelda. But, I mean, I mean, come on now. So I didn't really want to say the Sheikah Slate or anything in Breath of the Wild is kind of eligible for this list as it's a little too out there. But goddamn, this item at least needs some acknowledgement. Double Clash is still my favorite, but I think we got to give a little bit of acknowledgement to the Sheikah Slate. So if you zoned out for this entire video, well here's a middle finger for you. For those who paid attention, thank you for your time, and you all get a double claw shot of your own. Which I actually don't have any, and I don't think there's any way to actually create one of these practically. So I'm sorry, I actually don't have any for you. But there is no denying the best Zelda item is the double claw shot. It's just absolutely awesome. It's so useful for the game it's in, it always feels so well integrated with the levels that you find it, and you just straight up feel like a badass using it. I love this item, it is for sure the best item in all Zelda games. And honestly, I'd say it's probably the best item in all of video games. There may be stronger or maybe wackier ones out there that we could love in that one moment, but for an item to be this good throughout an entire series and only involve into something even better, that deserves more acknowledgement. If I had a wife, I would dump her immediately for the double claw shot. And with that kind of mindset, I can guarantee that I'll never get married.